Friends, much grace and peace from God who wonderfully made us, and from Jesus the Christ who came onto this earth to redeem us. Amen. I was so up to my eyeballs in preparation last week that inadvertently I worked this gospel, this Sunday's gospel, into one of the funeral messages for 36-year-old Rochelle Foster and uh, the message of Jesus about, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I hadn't looked ahead to the text. I didn't remember what the text was for this Sunday when I spoke those words. Uh, so I have addressed them at some point. I have made use of them already and probably will lean more on the teaching portion of this uh, gospel reading from Matthew in the 11th chapter. I don't know the name of my kindergarten teacher over at the old Belmont Elementary. Some people here have tried to help me with that name. It may have begun with W, her last name, but I just don't remember. What I do remember is the huge plant that we measured every day in that classroom. It grew like a weed, and maybe it was a weed, but it grew at least as fast as the beanstalk in Jack and the Beanstalk. Then by first grade, I was over at uh, Oakview Elementary there across from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. And I do remember my teacher's names from there, and I had perfect teacher's names. One was Miss Reed, and the other was Mrs. Reeder for uh, third and fourth grade, second and third grade, respectively. For fourth grade, I had Mrs. Wagner before we moved away from the Dayton area. So I remember my teachers from there on, and I could probably identify a favorite, and that favorite would have been in Fremont, and her name was Julia Gonawine interesting name, and Julia Gonawine must have had uh, a significant coin collection because she rewarded her math stars with silver dollars, and I got a number of them because I was the fastest at math on the board, and uh, I cheated a little bit, the others thought, because in my head I was already doing the last column, adding it up, and I was ahead of everybody else uh, in doing that. Now I suppose that would be too competitive and uh, frowned upon, but I enjoyed it back in its day. With four years of college and four more years of seminary, there have been lots of teachers along the way. At Trinity Seminary in Columbus, there is in fact a statue of Christ the teacher. We may not think in that direction so much, and yet when you think about how often Jesus is referred to as rabbi, you know that he was a great teacher. And they were amazed when he was a 12-year-old in the temple and he was in conversation with all the, all the people of wisdom, all the wise and great teachers as a 12-year-old. He, in a sense, fulfilled this uh, gospel reading. We tend to think of all the wisdom that goes to the grave. We tend to think in terms of, if I only knew then what I know now because of what we've learned over the years what we've heard from others and taken in, what we've observed in others. Wisdom. Jesus talks about wisdom in this gospel reading. A wisdom that comes from above. And yet a wisdom, he says, that has been revealed surprisingly even to infants, to those who would be the least likely to understand. Griffin knows now what the word hot means at 15 months. When he steps on a hot concrete block uh, or a paving stone on the walk, it's been in the sun all day in these 90 degree days, he knows hot. Wisdom. It's learned. It's earned as well. Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. We've talked about the calling of the disciples, and then all their tasks and mission statements in the previous chapter 
But this chapter is a teaching chapter. Jesus teaching his disciples. The Gospel of Matthew is often considered, in fact, a teacher's gospel. And at its very end, in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, Jesus does, in fact, say to those disciples as he commissions them and sends them out, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. Teach all nations, he says. Well, there has to be learning first. That must, uh, that must come from teaching of others before we can share that with additional people. So I'm thankful for those favorite teachers, those teachers along the way who played such a part in my education. Teaching facilitates truth and truth that becomes wisdom. Biblical wisdom has a lot of character. Jesus was a part of the wisdom tradition that is very, very significant to the Jewish people. Wisdom is life-giving, a life-giving gift that comes with the Lord's favor. In James, godly wisdom is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easily to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That makes the results of wisdom evident, the fruits of wisdom. So in fact, it doesn't require that we have reached the age of 75 or 80 or 90 to be the ultimate picture of wisdom. Jesus' prayer here and his teaching makes clear that that generalization does not always work. The hidden things have been revealed to infants, the ones we would consider least likely to understand. Jesus also says, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So revelation is a part of it. Revelation is an unfolding of truth. Truth is not always readily apparent. It seems to be harder and harder to recognize it, discern it, uh, and to know it in our world today. Truth gets altered. Truth gets ignored. Truth becomes debatable as there seemingly are no absolute truths anymore. And even lies are painted as truth. So we become weary. Truth does matter. Truth is the beginning of wisdom. It is a starting point for us to live faithful lives. There's always more to learn. The University of Dayton has the Osher Lifelong Learning Program, and uh, many universities have that similar program as well. Got plans for myself, probably at Sinclair and probably in a favored field related to uh, automotive, but go back and learn some things. Go back in retirement and uh, try some new ideas and some new things. I'm always thrilled when I come across something that even if I have, say, taken this every third year turn at preaching a particular gospel text and find some new insight for it after doing that 13 or 14 times in a career, a new aha moment, a special moment, a revelation, if you will. See something new in that. But part of that's shaped by the world around us and the circumstances that we face, and that's the, that's the valid reason for reading the scriptures through over and over again and see how they speak to us the truth today and hear the wisdom of those from, yes, generations way back, passed on down to us. I suspect we're guilty in this generation and it's probably been true of others of thinking, well, we know more these days than ever before. We've got more things figured out than ever before. And yet there's less certainty and there's less in the way of absolute truths and even truths that people can agree upon. Jesus taught his disciples. He called them, he prepared them, he taught them, and he sent them out to teach others. Go make disciples. Disciples are students. Disciples are learners. Why the emphasis in many congregations, not on membership, but discipling. 
making disciples as we continue to grow in knowledge, as we continue to study the scriptures, as we learn from one another, as the Spirit inspires us, and as Jesus continues to reveal God's activity to us, whenever he chooses and wherever he chooses and in some very, very surprising ways. The teaching gospel, Jesus the teacher, might emphasize Lord and Savior more, might emphasize uh, uh, incarnate God, might emphasize child of Bethlehem, might emphasize so many other titles. But rabbi they called him, which means great teacher. And oftentimes that great rabbi even appears with his emphasis that Jesus was certainly known as a teacher. For those who do not even see Jesus as Lord and Savior, teacher uh, is certainly something that they will agree upon and acknowledge. What a great teacher. And if only his disciples and his followers would live out his teaching. So our prayer today in this world, Jesus, teach us the ways of wisdom and love. Amen.